Well, hello again. It's me, Carpo, and welcome to my school. Now, just before I started this video, I thought of kind of how some YouTubers and creators name their fans or their viewers as kind of a group. And uh, I thought it was kind of a joke. I would think up one like Carpoites or something. But uh, when I thought of school, it just instantly clicked. I thought about it for a minute. I was like, Carpo as a carp as a fish. Welcome to my school of fish. But the beauty of that, and the why the metaphor works so well, is because a school of fish has no leader. And that's what I intend my channel to be. I'm not here telling you how to live your life. I'm not here telling you what to do or what not to do. In fact, that's something I make a big effort to really never do. Um, the only time I will say I absolutely stand by a viewpoint or another viewpoint is when other people are physically harmed by people's choices like, you know, violence, you know, the obvious ones, the things that we just kind of scoff at and say that's just part of society. But, um, you know, <clears throat> I'm not an angry person, and I really don't have any built-up aggressions or frustrations other than just once in a while you read an article or you hear a story, or it's especially when somebody gets... Like what happened in Philadelphia the other day on a on a subway where some lady was you know, attacked basically for several minutes while everybody sat around and just filmed it on their phones. This is kind of the world we live in where you've got to get angry. There's an old saying, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. But it's understandable that we need to control that anger, that frustration. Because what I see is over the last couple of years, there has been a lot of frustration bleeding out into areas where it should not be. It has become so confusing out there as to what to do and there's so much division because of this because people are angry and frustrated so they dig in their heels further now we have a public health issue which has become a political issue and this hasn't always been the case but what it's done is it's caused people to dig in so far that nobody is thinking critically anymore like when it comes to the current shots that people are getting fine do your thing it's your choice why does everybody have to make a big deal about it? Well, because, you know, people are feeling like they're guilted because of their choices. I guess it would be the same way as if you're guilted for not wearing a seatbelt or not putting a seatbelt on your kids. Or, um, I hate using that example or metaphor, but uh, to back up here for a minute, what's going on right now in the world, there's so many different things happening that people just don't know what to focus on and they don't know what's really important. So something as simple as wearing a mask or not can become a huge issue and cause fistfights and violence over this. And it's, you know, I'm somewhere in the middle because I actually, you know, I, I try to use my own thoughts on this. And it's very hard to filter what everybody else is, you know, all the claims others make. Let's, to, to give you an example, a lot of folks are complete alarmists. A lot of YouTubers, they base everything on rage bait. So guys like Steven Crowder, right, they can go on there and they can just blab a bunch of nonsense and people listen to it because it allows them to feel like they have a team, but more importantly in today's atmosphere, much more importantly, is to have an enemy. That is what people are looking for. It might be somebody in your own political party or somebody from another one. It might be somebody from a different religion. It could be somebody who simply looks different than you. And hate to put that one last because it should be first and foremost the fact that we do judge people based on their culture, their upbringing, their race. Uh, things like that have always been this way. But we are slowly changing and adjusting the way we think as we grow as a society. I feel like right now we are about at our teenage years. Let me just get, say uh, I can't speak for the whole world, I can only speak for my own country and what I see around me. But I can't even speak for my own country because I can only see my own state. I can't even speak for my own state because I can only see my own city and I can't speak for my own city because I only live in my own neighborhood and I can't speak for my own neighborhood because I just live in my street and my block and I actually live in my house where I only know so many neighbors. I only understand really a small fraction of what's really going on out there. And I try to learn. I try to understand what's going on in my neighborhood, what's going on statewide, federal, and you find that 
you can never have the complete information. You can never build a full picture of what's really going on. So in order for us to decide what is important, we used to go to the media. What's on the news? And that quickly changed. You know, over the last couple of decades, it's just fallen from grace to the point where there really is no balanced news. And I know there are certain channels and smaller, you know, I even like breaking points with uh, Cigar and Crystal, you know, even though they're just, you know, eye rolling sometimes, at least they try to hold a point of view that is balanced, even if they disagree with each other. And that's what I'm hoping all of us can move towards. Our whole society. If we weren't fighting about the dumb things, then we could look at the bigger problems. But to take the issue of the police state, for example, or the trampling of our rights. When you talk about the Patriot Act, let's say you go back to 2001, this whole issue with 9-11, and all of a sudden there's a Patriot Act. Every American's on board. Cool, you know, let's catch the bad guys. Let's allow ourselves to be surveilled. It wasn't really a choice. Uh, they just imposed it. But recently they re-approved it and updated it. And uh, the thing about the Patriot Act is it basically allows unfiltered monitoring of all Americans, regardless. And we know that there are server farms around the world that are loaded with every bit of information. My YouTube videos are sitting on a government server somewhere in case they ever have to go back and find out who I am. And this should scare the shit out of people, the fact that there really is no privacy. There's a big difference between my video that I'm posting online being saved by the government or an agency or Facebook and something I, I share in a private email or a text being stored. And the fact that we are so unprotected right now from um, our anon anonymity, if you will. I heard it put really succinctly earlier in a video and somebody was saying uh, those a lot of younger people today don't remember the Patriot Act. They don't remember what it was like before that or really even understand the implications of what happened. Because, and I said this to my wife the other day, it's like 1984, you know, it's an Orwellian society. But rather than double speak and double think and the government forcing us to live a certain way under fear of persecution, we have willingly chosen that path. The government did not need to put TVs in our televisions to watch us. We did it ourselves. They didn't have to have, you know, sound devices to capture our recordings. We did that to ourselves. We have ring doorbells. We have all these different modern conveniences and smart devices that allow us to be more connected. But in reality, we're giving up something for that. And right now, that might not sound like a big deal. It might sound alarmist to worry about whether or not your emails are being saved somewhere. But here's the thing. If we don't stand up for what we see as wrong now, then our children have to bear the brunt of that issue. And this is exactly what's happening now with the previous generations, the boomers, who I don't blame the boomers for all their problems. There's a, gener there's a whole movement of younger people today to blame the boomers for everything that went wrong. And you've got to realize, blaming the boomers for all the problems with oil and everything else is very similar to blaming... Um, you know, a child for burning his hand on the stove when he's five years old. This is what our society was, slowly growing. Can you imagine living in a time where you discovered oil and realized, wow, this can be converted into something that can burn consistently and power a motor that can drive a vehicle across the country? An amazing discovery. I mean, it was totally revolutionized everything. And... Um, Unfortunately, the fear never crept back in about that one, even though everybody's afraid of nuclear power now, even though I am a proponent of nuclear power because I see that it might be our only way out of this at this point. Um, but that gets into a different realm. Um, when I'm talking about freedoms and losing our freedoms, I don't think folks realize when I'm talking about post 9-11 shit, I'm talking about the fact that in the 80s and 90s, if you go back and watch some of the riot videos or some of the, you know, let's just say, uprisings that happened around the country. Um, when the police showed up, they would be intimidating. They would be on horses. They'd have their helmets. They'd have their batons out. But the thing is, the police showed up with their faces showing, not covered by a mask or riot gear, and they were in their regular T-shirt or their, you know, button-up 
short sleeve shirt and pants. They looked like people. And this is what we're missing today. We're allowing our police and military to basically dress like, you know, assassins and uh, be completely nameless. I mean, in Portland last year, when I watched the, the, the way that Portland went down, look, I don't support anarchy and looting and rioting and burning shit down, but I also don't support the side that causes people to be able to react to this. The police that, you know, covered up their names and their badges and they basically are faceless, nameless people out there. Now, you're not as safe as you might think you are if you're a law-abiding citizen and you're just doing your thing. It doesn't mean that you're okay and good to go. There have been people pinned to the ground, all their money taken, people pulled over who were on the way to go pick up a new car or buy something for their business. If a police officer pulls you over and says, do you have any money in the car? Do not ever say yes. And you might think, well, a police should be honest, but they're not. And <laughs> cops will confiscate your money and they don't have to give you anything but a receipt. And you can spend years uh, fighting it in court and never get your money back. There are so many cases like this, it's ridiculous. And the reason I bring that up is because a lot of folks are completely in support of the police. They think that Antifa is the problem, that it's these anarchists and looters, and we've got to stop these people. Um, the truth is, it's a very small percentage of people who are doing that shit. It needs to be dealt with, but it's not going to be dealt with by increasing the firepower of the entire police force. So I could ramble on forever, but I'm not going to. Before I go, I wanted to read you a few of the amendments of the Constitution. And I think some of them you're probably well aware of. The First and Second Amendment, we should all be aware of. But how many of you know what the Fourth Amendment is? Like, really? If I were to take a poll and say, do you know what the Fourth Amendment is? Um, and it's probably one of the more important ones, but I'm just going to read the first few just so you can see where I'm coming from. The First Amendment is freedom of speech, obviously, but to read it, Amendment 1, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition a government for redress of grievances. Um, all of this is being stripped away, of course, but let's get to Amendment 2, which is Second Amendment supporters love this one. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And um, that one has been pretty consistent throughout history. I mean, uh, there's always been people who want to stop firearms, but we know that's never going to happen in this country. And for those who say they're going to take our guns, it's just the same old conversation over and over. There's too much money to be made with firearms, and they won't be giving that up. Um, the Third Amendment isn't mentioned much because it's not relevant as much. It says, No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Which just means soldiers can't just come and say, hey, we're living in your house now because it's wartime. I mean, that one's become pretty irrelevant. But the Fourth Amendment is probably the most important one here, uh, beyond one and two, out of all of them. It says, The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall be issued, uh, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. That's very specific. You have to be able to point out what you're seizing. In, in other words, if cops break into your house to find cannabis and they find a firearm, they can't bust you for something that wasn't on the warrant. Um, it's, I mean, they can with firearms, but let's just say they can't search through your persons to find things that are irrelevant to the case. It's one of the few protections we're supposed to have still. And uh, look, I've had a search warrant executed on me, so I know. I had them show up at my door with a paper in hand and uh, basically, you know, bust the 18, 20-year-old pot grower with like eight small plants under a fluorescent light. It was like such a rookie thing. And they have all these people coming out, you know. And I remember there was a newspaper article printed about me and it said, Drug dealer ignores borders. Now police do too. And it went on to describe how they were actually out of their jurisdiction, but 
for some reason I was this big scary drug dealer. And by the way, I'd never sold drugs. It was, you know. But at that time, being like 21 years old and having my face smeared and my name smeared, that article led into another article about some guy who got busted for murder. Like, it was just blended right in the same article. And I was like, wow. So that was my first experience with how the media really covers things. And um, I've never trusted in them, but that was definitely a, a wake-up call. But um, I don't know. To, to get to the point here, if I have one, it would be to be aware of our rights when they're infringed, but also to not... I don't know I have to word this carefully. Like when we talk about mandates, for example, with the current epidemic, if you want to call it an epidemic, or it could be a pandemic at this point, or I guess it's considered to be something that we're going to... It's an endemic, is what it is. We're going to be living with it for a very long time. We've now looked at the you know, the facts about COVID, we've seen how it spreads and we say, okay, well, we're kind of screwed and we're going to have to live through this until the variants play out or until it just becomes an endemic virus. Amidst this, there's a lot of scrambling to try to figure out what we should or shouldn't do. A lot of medicines are being tried that may or may not work very well and statistics being thrown around about, well, you're less likely to die if you have this or that. But a complete ignoring of the personal choice and it's being pushed under the guise of it's good for the society. This is why we have laws. This is why we have rules. This is why we drive on one side of the road. I mean, there are certain laws you have to follow in order to be in a society. That's totally understandable, and I agree with it. But um, it's not going to solve the problem of distrust and frustration when we're continuously just pointing the finger at each other and saying, you guys are dumb. Your side is dumb. Oh, you must be one of these people. Oh, you believe this, so therefore you are stereotyped into this group. And I find it to be kind of nonsense. So that's my ramble for today. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. And um, uh, there was another one uh, I wanted to read, the, the Sixth Amendment. In a criminal prosecution, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state. Um, that one's pretty funny because, yeah, that's not always conducive to the way we actually do business. But this one, the Eighth Amendment says, Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual in punishments inflicted. And if you look at the um, policing for profit, and you're aware of like what I said about confiscating funds and uh there's basically no liability for police because they are protected by qualified immunity, meaning even if they beat the shit out of somebody, the police officer himself cannot be sued. It, only the department. And what happens is you sue the department and then guess who pays for it? The taxpayers. So every time a cop beats somebody up and they get sued, it's you and I that pay for it. And this is why I bring up the issue of police because they are supposed to be to serve and protect, but that has become... Uh, they become more of a public nuisance to a lot of people. And as I said, our country is kind of a teenager. I feel like in the beginning, maybe we did need a federal government. Maybe we did need large police forces and large military, but we don't anymore. I really don't think that it's necessary that we have so much power over the people by those who are supposed to be our protectors. And uh, from what I've seen with the decline in police around my own town, um, it's 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 a very complicated issue because people say, well, crime rates will go up, but then you have to ask yourself whether they would have gone up anyway. This is a circumstance of what's going on right now in the world. So much confusion, such a lack of understanding that we all have. Um, the Tenth Amendment says the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. And that's my final little quip there. Um, the states have the ultimate say in the end because the federal government is pretty incompetent at directing states. And uh, it's almost like they've just become kind of a, a second thought, if you will. And I really don't think it's necessary that we have so much bureaucracy out there. Because, because of that, we have consistent, you know, monitoring surveillance of the American people. And we're living in a really weird time. And I don't know what to think about it all. So... That's my rant. Thanks for coming along, and uh, 
Let me know what your opinions are on all this bullshit. Talk to you next time. Be well. Love each other. If you can.